now every input lets you add a bunch of different settings to it. So I'm just going to add a color input here to get started with. Um, so let's just make this green color. I'm going to put this in program so you can see that. So while we go through these settings here, uh, here's general. Um, I can assign it to any color here. These colors are basically folders um, for vMix, so you could organize your assets in any way. Um, this will, this is basically uncolored, so this will collect everything. It's an all, um, basically like a master of every single input you want. A lot of times we'll make red as like the day of. Um, this will have any final virtuals that we might make, any like completed compositions, or just as a way to reduce the input sizes of what's in front of us so it's easier to find things. Um, but everything will exist in the all. Um, and then, so I could select it here. There's another way I can select what folder it lives in um, and that's as simple as clicking and dragging it to the color over here um, so you'll see the cog turns the color of the folder it's in so if I like wanted to organize these all around I can and then I still see them in the all in the same order um, but then red I didn't assign anything but yellow I did and just the red show up there so it's a good way of filtering out inputs to stay organized if I right click on one of these I can also change the title um, so I can actually label these folders as well. So that's a good way to stay organized with um, when you have a lot of assets on vMix. I'm going to audio mixer back in. So let's go back here. Um, some other settings here. This is where we'll, again, pick widescreen if we need to. Um, mouse click action if we wanted to click on it. Normally I make it preview, but if you wanted to do like a direct cut or like go to something specifically to speed up uh, your workflow, you can do that here. I don't like it because you don't have take back sees where if at least it's in preview, you could, if you accidentally click on the wrong thing, which people tend to do often, um, you don't you risk you ruining the show as much. Um, you could also sharpen it or mirror it to reverse the image that's coming in. Um, over here and then here are those we all these settings were in the default so these will when I create the input have the defaults but if I ever want to turn that off like if I wanted this to restart with transition I could just check it off here um, as well um, but again it will get the defaults as soon as they start um, also audio settings to be activated from here um, you could also get into it over here every input that has audio will show up here so if like browser YouTube for example over here I could click on this gear and that audio settings from the other menu will bring you to the same place here um, so here is what uh, we'll do a bunch of different things for um, we'll typically leave it on all channels um, we could gain it up here. I kind of wish there was an easier access for gain, but this is if you know something's quiet, you could go add a little bit of gain in the audio settings for it and reset. It has automatic gain control. We don't normally use that because we don't have manual control over it, but um, that is an opportunity there. You could also add delay, so I could add up to, I think, like 10 seconds a video delay or of audio delay I mean um, oh no it's 20 seconds that's awesome so I could add 20 seconds of audio delay there um, what's also awesome about this though is I could add negative delay so negative delay is video delay so if you notice that your video is faster than your audio and you need to slow down video you could do that here by adding a negative delay um, so we'll just test it out just change it every per periodically so we could watch it make sure the sync is good um, but the, the negative delay is pretty sweet um, over here, um, you can add audio plugins. Um, I haven't really messed around with it too much, but you could go kind of crazy with like, I know you could put like waves on here and stuff like that. So that's a good way to add some audio processing onto your live stream. Um, there's like a ton of different options here and how you use that. You also have like a limited EQ here. It gets like, it kind of like gets the job done. Um, so you could do some limited things if like some frequencies are coming in weird um, just by, you know, just dragging the faders around here. Uh, typically we like just putting that on audio console because that's what it's built to do instead of on vMix, but you could. Um, same thing with compressors and noise gates. Um, I haven't played around with them too much. I'm also not an audio engineer, so I don't really know how good they are, um, but you can if you need to compress some signal, um, set that up over here. Channel mixer is good. Um, if you have any inputs that are getting more than two channels, you can mix them here. Or if, for example, like you're getting a mono channel that's just on the left side, um, it would show up here. So I could just reduce the right side to make sure I don't accidentally get something in over there. Um, or if like, oh, I know I only want the left side, I could do that there. And then the matrix, I could sum it out. So if I was receiving, let me play something on YouTube so we can kind of see what we're doing here. So. So let's actually look at how this is set up here. So I'm going to go into the settings for this Hardware Junkies video here. 
Um, and then I'm going to start playing it so we can start hearing it. And I'm going to turn a loop on. Loop is uh, in the input here. You could turn this on, and it'll just be on a continuous loop. Um, Welcome so to Hardware Junkies, a new series where we explore and innovative and interesting hardware tech there. used in live streaming and then and the broadcast. channel matrix, if I wanted to, let's say, lose this completely, and now we're only hearing it on one side. Um, but then if I wanted to sum this I'm out, I could go to channel matrix and then master, add that over here. So now I have a mono signal PTZ of that system. instead of the um, stereo signal. So sometimes we'll, if we're doing like a production somewhere else, a lot of times like in AV world, they just use mono. So if they give us mono, we want to make sure it's not only on our left channel. So we'll go in here and sum it out left to right. Um, so we're still able to send a left to right mono mix um, on a live stream instead of just the left channel. Um, so that's how you set that up over here. And then you could hide it if you know you don't care about the audio settings there or something like that. And here, um, you could mix each of the inputs into your headphone bus. So if you have, if you're using headphones plugged into the computer running vMix, you could actually mix them out of your headphones if you want. Uh, so you're not affecting the program stream, but if like something's super loud and you're trying to hear other things over it, uh, you could reduce it over here. We're using a Panasonic HD30. Um, cool, so that's that. I'm gonna pause that here. Um, that's pretty much it for audio settings. Uh, let's go back to some of our input settings here. Um, uh, over here are virtual inputs. Virtual inputs are super awesome. They'll basically um, be copies of things, and then they still are related to the old file. So I'm just going to drag this back up here. So you'll see the numbers are changing around as I'm adding it. So again, back to what we were talking about before of knowing whether you're linking to the title or the number. Um, that changes as I move stuff around here, so something to be aware of. Um, and then if I click here, this is a virtual, so this is basically an exact copy of this. So if I play this here, it H also plays in the virtual. So that's great. If I want a version of this paces, to be, you know, you know really a little feel. bit smaller, yeah, let's so say, like this, here from Panasonic as well. so and then as usual, I could have them both playing at the same time. The so if I, I do a merge like transition, I do that kind of animation. Up on the joystick. Um, because it is a virtual off the same good. input, I'm able to use yeah. a merge. Well, I'm going to get more details, details of what the merge does. Um, but um, because of it's in a virtual, I'm able to do that. But then on this virtual layer, I could change new things. So if, like for example, I wanted to make this black and white, I could go to color adjust, turn off use source settings, and then reduce the saturation of this. But now my original source is fine. I didn't affect it at all. I just affected the virtual. So I try to use that as a rule of thumb, is if I have a source, even if I know I'm going to want to change it, I'm just going to make a virtual. Um, there's a shortcut to make a virtual. If you right click on the cog, you can just create a virtual input directly from there. Um, and here, um, I will always make a virtual so I'm not changing the source because um, if something changes or something like that, I don't want to have to remember what I did before or anything like that. I want to just be able to go like, oh, we don't like that one. I'm just going to close that out, make a new virtual, take it from there, um, that kind of thing. Uh, so virtuals are really great uh, for multi-views, um, um, two boxes, stuff like that. Um, it's a very, very powerful tool, and that's why uh, VMix is so great because um, you can have a lot of copies of the same things that look a little bit differently um, so you could kind of make your whole setup instead of having to build it in layers like you would on a switcher you could kind of build it on just one input so it's really simple to switch during the show um, go back to that video here um, so that's pretty much it for the general uh, over here